Uh, so six uh, says, if a balloon filled with um, dinitrogen tetroxide gas at 500 degrees Celsius and 0 0.87 atm is cooled to 128 degrees Celsius, what is the new pressure of the N2O5 gas? Okay. So we know some things about it already, right? We know the initial temperature, right? So that's T1 uh, is 500 Celsius, right? And we know P1 too, right? It says it's 0 0.87 ATN. What else do we know? We know uh, T2, right? The t temperature that it changed to. Um, 128 degrees C. And P2, it asks, well, it asks, what's the new pressure of the gas, right? So that's what it's looking for. And remember, to get this, you don't have to remember all of those laws, you know? Uh, you just have to remember the ideal gas law, and that's PV equals nRT, right? And you just do 1, 1, 1, 1, and then divide it by uh, PV equals nRT, but 2, 2, 2, 2, okay? And then you ask yourself, did P change? Yes. yes. So you can't cancel that out, right? Because P1 does not equal P2, right? Did V change? No. So what does that mean? If V did not change, then that means V1 equals V2, right? So essentially V1 or V1 is V2, right? So if that's the case, we can cancel both of those out. So that, that makes sense, yeah. right? Uh, did the number of moles of gas change? No. no, so it's the same argument, right? N1 equals N2. Does R ever change? No. So that can cancel out. So we've got this new equation, right? So what's our new equation here? P1, P1 divided by P2. By P2. Very good. Plus T1 divided by T2. T1 over T2. Very good. And uh, what are we looking for? P2. So we want to isolate that variable. We could do it a number way, of uh, ways. The way I like to do it is just flip it over, right? And then just multiply by uh, P, both sides by P1. But let's flip it first, OK? So now we got P2 on the top. So what we do to one side, we got to do to the other side. Like that. And then, of course, we want to isolate the variable P2. So we're going to multiply by P1, right? Because P1 is being divided by P2. So what's our new equation? P2 equals yeah. Very good, right? And um, you want to think about it this way. So uh, the temperature decreased, right? Would you expect the pressure to increase or decrease? Decrease. You would you'd expect it to decrease. So you would think that it would be less than 0.87 ATM. Okay. The other thing that you want to do is get this in Kelvin. Okay, so do you remember how to do that? Just add plus 273. Two yeah, add 273. So that's going to be 773. And then absolute temperature, so now we can plug that in there. So we always want to remember, we've got to change that to Kelvin, because Celsius will go um, negative and positive, and that'll mess up, you know, your calculations. So anyways, I'm just going to put it over here, so we'll have more room to plug and chug. So P2 equals, well, T2, which is 401k, P1 
atm. This is very similar to what we were doing today, remember? Yeah. yeah. Um, and in fact, you'll see that it's very, very similar to the things that you just keep repeating the same thing. And then T1, of course, is going to be 773 Kelvin. And of course, Kelvin cancels, leaving you with ATM. Right? Would you expect ATM to be your units? Yes. Because you're looking for pressure. Okay? So you want to always keep all that stuff in mind. So we have 401 times 0.87 and then divide that by 773. Now remember, we thought it should be less, right? And in fact, um, it is, <laughs> which is cool. And it should be the two sig figs, right? Because this one is two sig figs. Okay. So when I get it, I get 0 0.45 18. Is that what you get? Does it make sense? Yeah. Oh, we did. So you just want to do it stepwise. All of these are stepwise things. And if you're not, you know, if you're skipping steps or things like that, you're going to mess up, you know? And the other thing you want to, you want to ask yourself is, does my answer make sense? Yeah. It went down, you know? You would expect it to go down. From hot to cold, you know? Here, if you put a balloon, it's going to, you know, decrease in pressure if you put it in the cold. Okay, cool.